thank you for inviting me. I'm glad to be here to tell everyone my story and this horror movie that I've been through in the last week. First of all, I want to, to say mm -hmm. that you, you said that Hamas must not win. They can't win. They are a terror organization and we are a country with army and with real weapons. They just, just know how to kill babies. So with that being said, I'll tell my, my story. Um, although my story is just one of thousands of other stories may, may be worse than my story. But what I've been through is that, first of all, I'm 19. I'm from the center of Israel in a town named Rishon Tzion. And I came to this party to do like, I'm, as a video, videographer. Uh, I'm, I'm a filmmaker for, this is what I'm living from. Uh, I, I chose not to recruit to the army. I didn't want to be part of it. Um yes, and and I just got back from an eight-month uh, travel in, in so South America. I've been in a lot of country there, and I came back a week before the party. Uh, one of my reasons that I came back is to shoot this party too, because it's one of the biggest festival, trans festival that were in Israel in the last years. Uh, so I came to the party with two of my my view, my friends that were helping me to do the videography and sound and all of that. And we came to the party at like 3 or 4 a.m. And we started like we waited for the sun to rise to start shooting and start doing all the all those the, the technical things. We enjoyed the party for the, those two hours, and then we started to see rockets in the sky, a lot of like white uh, trails of rockets. But uh, we didn't uh, we didn't got so like excited or so like taking it seriously because we have the uh, David Dom, we have the Kipat Barzel. I don't know how to say the Iron name. Dome. The Iron Dome. And it's uh, launched the rocket while in mid air, so we were we were thought that we we were safe, and then they stopped the music, said the party is over, and everyone just go home. And because I didn't came to to the party, I came to film the party, so I said, okay, now I don't have anything to do here. Let's just go home. I I uh, got into my car with uh, my two of my friends. And we started to go out from the party. Uh, the way from out of the party, there is one road that leads. Everything is open area of uh, fields. And there is one road that uh, you can go through. We went through this road. After five or 10 minutes of driving, uh, we started We start to hit uh, shootings. We didn't realize after a few seconds, my my friend is pointing at me. Me, my friend pointed on people in in, in the bushes shooting on us. Uh, and as soon as he, he did it, all of my car was started to get shot at. One of my friend got hit from those shoots in his leg through the car. I drive, so I just turn 180 and started to drove to, through the towards the party because I knew that there, there is a forces of police and maybe they called backup. I don't know. I, I thought that there I'm going to be safe because I, I had the uh, armed, armed people there. Um, but then we see that on the other way, we have terrorists too. So we were locked from both way on one way road that you can't really drive on the, on the sand, on the fields. Uh, so then we saw like a shelter because it's in the south and in the south they always throw rockets on us. So the government puts in uh, near bus stations a shelter that you can get in in a case of an emergency like rockets that won't fail on you. Like the, you know even when they launch the rockets in midair that the pieces of the rockets is falling on your head and it's dangerous too. So they put like a shelter. Uh, which is one way in, one way out. It's the same uh, door. Um, um, and it's like three meters by two meters, something like this. 
and I see a lot of people getting inside there, and I see a police a armed armed police officer with his gun out, said everyone getting. Uh, we we got inside this shelter, and as in the middle, when we started to get inside the shelter, we hear that they shooting on us. We literally hear, can hear the whistling of the shootings on our head, and some of the shootings hit the cars that were there and on the shelter itself. And we got inside the shelter, and after uh, a few minutes, we got hit on the shelter with RPG, uh, like a shoulder rocket. I, I, I think it's called this way. And, and after the RPG, everyone was in panic. All the sh most of the shelter collapsed on us, a lot of pieces from the shelter. And a we hear a lot of shootings, like not just like one shooting, two shooting. We hear like a war zone, like of maybe, I think, I don't know, five, 10, 20 people shooting on the shelter. Not all the people that were in inside the shelter, uh, not all the people that were near the shelter got inside because there is there wasn't enough room. People were climbing on each other. My luck it was that I got inside. I, I was one of the first to get inside. So I had I was inside inside the shelter, away from the entry. Uh, so everyone that was in the entry that couldn't fit in, they got shot and killed. And then when they saw that we don't get outside, they just throw a grenade inside the this the shelter. They throw a, a grenade, the, the kind of grenades that throw pieces all over. I don't know how it's called, uh, but there is a lot of kinds of grenades. So they throw those kinds. They throw one. And in the first grenade, I see like huge explosion and all blood, all the, the, the walls. People were exploding in front of my face. And then they throw. And while they do it, People try to get out because they saw a grenade and they shoot whoever they try to get out. And they draw another grenade and like four grenades. And they thought they killed everyone. Uh, I think we were like 30 people inside this shelter and outside of it. And I think only five or six uh, were getting from it alive. Uh, I, I was alive just because... I had I what I did it's to cover myself with dead bodies to survive. And even when after they throw all the grenades, they want to make sure everyone is dead. So they got inside the shelter and just shoot everyone. And a lot of bullets got inside my legs. Right now I can't really walk. Both of my legs are with bullets and pieces from the grenade. Uh, one is in bad condition, all the muscle is ripped, and one is in a better. And that's pretty much what happened. And then, like, after 40 minutes of they shooting us and do it, they went, they 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 got off there. And uh, because, you know, it was, I don't know if you saw the videos, but it was people stacks on each other, like, in a huge pile, and I was in the bottom, so... All the shots was wasn't affect me. Although I think that, uh, although yeah, I'll try to make it not uh, too much scary. But it was like a horror movie. Like you think people without body parts in the worst worst things. A lot of girls, a lot of my friends was died there. Then I just uh, ran out of this shelter. I saw a car. I got it. Get inside the car and drove like into 100 meter and uh, uh, as we get shot we 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 saw an entry to like a town a small town of jews uh, like that uh, are near to Gaza, gaza um it's called kibbutz sad and then there they uh, got me inside on uh, anuka how do you say it they got okay. me inside. They uh, put. Uh, they take took care of me. Gave me an uh, pills for pains and trauma, and they took care of me. I've been there, and even then, there inside of the in Kibbutzad, 
they the the terrorists uh, try to get in they shoot the uh, rpg and throw grenades on the entry but we had like a a people armed people inside it wasn't the army but there was an armed armed people inside the the this place and they tr was able to defend us no but yeah, yeah, yeah. we need to move on okay Sorry, so that, uh, that, 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 that any any last words yeah that's pretty much my story i can say that i heard worsters by thousands times stories uh but this is was my story and what i've been through thank you thank you Noam.